morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Vandal, I'm the Pollution Marketing Manager for Ford Customer Service Division. With me is Jerry Benani, he's one of our senior pollution engineers. So thank you for the round of applause. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to talk about our uh, aluminum F series lineup and uh, obviously some of the new exciting changes to the product. Um, as an overview, and then Jerry's going to do the details of the repairability side. Let's start with the 2017 F-150, um, some of the new changes to the product. Obviously, we updated that in 2015. We've been talking about that for a couple of years at uh, a number of trade shows. Um, and then we're going to see talk a little bit about the details of the new, all new 2017 Super Duty and really how that ties into collision repair. So next slide. So uh, 2015 uh, product overview, um, or the F-150 product overview, it was designed to be tougher, smarter, and more capable. And I think that's something that's consistent with anything we, we do in particular with F-Series. All new high strength steel frame, um, aluminum alloy body, um, 10 million miles of testing. Smarter, significant number of classes to use exclusive features, and also, as with the aluminum, we want it to be more capable, so that, that weight savings is poured into uh, what it can do uh, for you in terms of towing and horsepower. So, um, what is exciting for the 2017 is we have a new second generation 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine with uh, auto start stop technology, uh, adding fuel economy, and it's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission, um, and that boosts the uh, Boost the, boost the torque 50 foot pounds, um, and again, just adding more towing and capability overall. Next slide. So, um, this is uh, the foundation of the vehicle um, high strength steel, 77% uh, more steel, um, more high strength steel, 60 pounds lighter, um, so lighter, stiffer, but more importantly, as it relates to us today, and Gary's going to get into the details of it, is the uh, service frame sections have uh, really built around repairability and make this so we can really save vehicles that otherwise may have been totaled. Um, and I'm not going to read too many of the details going around uh, this slide, but you can see there isn't a piece of this that we didn't look at and try to impact the technology, whether it was adding new powertrains or the 2.7 liter uh, EcoBoost, the 360 degree camera, um, active carpets, and the LED headlamps. Uh, really, we're trying to put our best newest technology into our highest volume products. So, um, in terms of class exclusive technology, um, we've got uh, uh, we've got a blind spot monitoring system you can see there in the, uh, in the upper left. Um, but I think from a collision repair perspective, this is important to note in terms of all the different sensors that are around this vehicle and how those sensors can be impacted uh, within a collision and making sure that that information is used in, in, in the repair plan um, from getting that vehicle back and road ready. So this, this is my favorite feature. Um, that uh, I have an F-150, but I'm not good at um, backing up with a trailer. And this is uh, uh, the marketing guy in me wanted to call this the idiot-proof uh, um, trailer assist feature is if you back up the trailer. It actually takes all, all, all the uh, mystery out of it and allows uh, the vehicle, if you will, to drive itself as you point it where you want it to go. So again, this pro-trailer backup assist is a really, really neat class exclusive feature and helps really people like me that are not used to reversing trailer every day um, look like pros at it. So, New for 2017 is uh, the F-150 Raptor. We do have some of these over in the Ford Performance booth. booth. It's, it's great. It takes all, all the same strengths of, of, of the standard F-150 and, if you will, picks it up a notch. Um, uh, it, take, it still has the same uh, high output 3.5 liter EcoBoost, but even taken uh, to a new level at uh, 411 horsepower and over 434 pounds of torque. Um, and again, with a 10 speed, uh, 10 speed automatic transmission, but it does add a frame management system that really can give that off roading uh, experience. So, now, more details on the Super Duty. Um, what we did for F 150, uh, we really did for Super Duty. Why should it be any, any different? Just I think at a, at, a, at a bigger, tougher scale. Next slide. Um, I, really the same design ethos from the standpoint of tougher, smarter, and more capable. Um, uh, all new frame, uh, especially the foundation. Uh, 350 pounds less weight overall, but significant, uh, significantly stronger and more durable. Um, again, class exclusive features that were on F-150 translate directly over into Super Duty, making it really the smartest Super Duty we've ever had. And from a capability standpoint, um, you know, three engine options, but the 6.7 liter uh, power strip diesels where it's at generating 440 horsepower and over 90, 20, at 925 foot-pounds of torque. And you're towing around 33,000 pounds uh, properly equipped. So um, pretty absurd, obscene amount of uh, towing capability uh, with this new truck. 
So, uh, class exclusive technologies. I didn't mention before a 360 degree uh, camera with uh, split view, also a, a trailer reverse guidance system, as I mentioned before, um, LED headlamps. Um, you know, some really practical technology features too. Uh, trailer, tire, trailer tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, you know, a really practical, practical safety application um, that can help with towing, keeping, keeping your driver safe. And then um, also adds our blind spot uh, information system as well. Uh, that's also in the f And so, super duty frame features, especially the frame. The frame is all new. 95% uh, high strength steel frame, fully boxed, lighter, stronger, but 24 times stiffer. Um, it is a significant improvement frame. There's a great video on YouTube where they actually hang a significant number of F 150s, I think it's six, from the frame itself. Um, so one of those fun marketing stunts, but uh, uh, there's almost no no torquing, if you will, in the frame. It really uh, shows shows the strength of that frame. And again, just with the F-150, um, and Jerry's going to get more details on this now. The the frame is designed for repairability, um, so it can uh, help save some of those vehicles. Otherwise, maybe would have been a significant um, repair, maybe even a total loss. Now can be saved uh, in, in, in sections. So with that, we give it to Jerry, and he's going to take it through the. Uh, to the details and conclusion repair perspective. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jerry Benami. I'm the senior engineer for pain body damageability repair at the Ford Motor Company. I've been on the 2009, actually since 2009 or so, I've been working with these aluminum F-series vehicle families. So this has been around for a little while in my shop. We've done quite a bit of background work with a lot of our partners and friends in the industry. And I take you through some of the serviceability features right now. As you look at this, Take a note, you have a full front frame third section available for service. We have a full rear third frame available. Also the short stub kit, which goes about 18 inches from the front bumper brackets rearward. This is one of our most popular kits. What happens, a vehicle might be sitting at a light, a larger, heavier vehicle comes across, somebody with a rig, cuts the front of the F-150 or Super Duty off, you're damaging the front frame horns. This is a front frame point kit, very, very popular, easy to replace with your standard frame service things. Now, if you look at this, check this out. On the older truck, the number two cross member had the bracket for the lower control arm very, very integrated into it. Here's an example. Running down the road, hits some ice, vehicle spins, goes into a ditch hard, hits some kind of concrete abutment or a rock or whatever. The lower control arm gets shifted rearward. Many vehicles, it's gonna happen. But on this truck, what's kind of neat about it, we ask the engineers for a serviceable, separately replaceable bracket. Common sense, if you can replace a $400 bracket versus a several thousand dollar frame section in the labor, you're saving the truck. Chances are there may not be other damage in the frame. You're doing a really good repair, far less invasive. So, all of the brackets that are available for frame service are itemized on the board and in our materials that are in the booth here today. But there's brackets that you have available now you've never had for service before. Items like the center support bearing bracket for the drive shaft. You have a customer that's really rocking the truck hard, going into trailer, I mean, um, snow plow duty, off-roading rough. There's a lot of things that can happen in extreme environments. We have a front 4x4 axle bracket for the differential. We have numerous other brackets like the frame, I mean as far as the leaf springs for the, to the frame, rear bumper brackets, etc, etc, etc. Now, similar story for the Super Duty. On the Super Duty, remember both of these are fully boxed, high strength, low alloy 550 frames. The weight savings is phenomenal, but the strength is phenomenal too. When you look at this front frame section kit, you note that that includes the cross members and also the brackets for the frame as far as where they go to the body. You have the rear frame section kit and then we have the leaf spring hanger brackets and radius arm brackets and shock tower kits as well. All of those are listed in some of the materials that are in the bag all through there on the memory stick and ready for service. Now, let's talk a little bit about aluminum. Okay, you've been hearing this all around for a couple of years now. I'll go through it quickly, I won't bore you, but I'm going to tell you some of the details of the Ford program quickly. Our design for repairability is looking at the vehicle as it's coming on the, on the drawing board. How can we improve it to make it easier to repair from a collision repair standpoint? 
talk about training courses, going to talk about tools and equipment, and of course the shows that we've been having. So, aluminum, in a nutshell. It's not more difficult, it's different. Your techniques are going to change, but a lot of the philosophies remain. You're going to have a quarantine separate tool set. It includes different hammers, different dollies, clamps. Our rotunda friends in the corner over here have a beautiful tool kit that we spec out. You can label all the tools for aluminum usage only and keep them in a separate area of the shop. Now, I said separate area of the shop. You want to have a quarantine area to work with aluminum, especially class A. Goss curtain walls, available through Rotunda or Carline or Chief or other vendors, allow you to take a corner of your shop and quarantine it as an aluminum repair area only. Again, good shop hygiene, keeping the steel separated from the aluminum repairs, critical to minimize cross-contamination. Welding equipment I'm going to touch on in just a minute, and we'll cover a little bit. Okay, I said I would uh, clarify a little bit of the differences between the F-150 and the Super Duty. So, has anyone repaired a 2009 or up steel F-150 in the apron tube? Okay, a lot of times I'll get a couple of people in the audience. Let me tell you what happened. In the past design, this apron tube assembly, or the shotgun, used to go in and underneath the hinge pillar. It was a two-tube affair. What happened, you had to disconnect and lower the instrument panel to gain access to the spot wells that were hidden well above the hinge area. Now, we're adding seven to eight hours of, seven to eight hours of time to the repair, plus we're introducing rattles, headaches, and other things. So, on this design, all of the fasteners go straight in. You do not have to do anything under the dashboard. You can do everything from the exterior. And you can see graphically on this apron tube on this display what that looks like. There's separate fasteners down on the bottom. You're going to separate those. The part simply comes off. Replacing it, the opposite. You're going to put the adhesive in position, set up your repair rivets, rivet everything back together, make sure it's properly positioned. You're done with the repair. Now, to compare to Super Duty, Super Duties have larger diesel engines, they have charge air coolers, they have bigger cooling packages. Bigger engines need bigger space for the engine bay. So what we decided to do with the tandem tube setup, these are actually high strength, low alloy, 550 steel. Now that changes where the aluminum was used on the F-150's apron tube that Super Duty uses the high strength, low alloy steel. Repair is basically the same though. You're not having to pull the instrument panel, you're doing the same basic repair philosophy that's done on the F-150. Fasteners that go straight in, you're not touching any, anything under the dash, and your fasteners at the front of the lower tie bar support. Any questions on that? Is this cool? The reason we're looking at this is common sense approaches to try to repair the truck in the most least invasive manner we could. So when we looked at some of these designs, we went to the engineers and said, look, we're having a lot of trouble in the field repairing this particular area on the steel truck. How can we improve it? And some of the engineers really took it and ran with it. And these are some of the examples. Now, the next example is really cool. Imagine, if you will, you're looking at this cab. The frame has been removed for clarification. The truck is on a lift, and it took a hard hit right to the B pillar lower, between the two doors of the crew cab. So a you know, larger vehicle hit the side of this F-150 or Super Duty. Now, the only approved repair in the past, you replaced this entire floor pan and all the attendant cross members and all the brackets and the torque boxes. Can you say invasive? That's a lot of time, that's a lot of effort. Many times you might push a truck into a total. So what we decided to do, we worked with engineering and we were able to get sectioning options. You see the red lines? You can section just this portion of the outer part of the frame, the, the uh, cab cross members. That can be done on the cab cross members. You can section the inner rocker panel, this purple part, and you can also section the four pan skin. If something gets thrown up at the floor pan of this truck, you can put in a section of the pan, not the entire floor pan. So there's a lot of really good design techniques that came in here that make servicing the truck that much easier and more dynamic. 
Procedures for all of these are itemized in the service instruction worksheets that you see on the board here and also loaded on the memory sticks in the bags. The bags are full. That memory stick has a lot of good information you want to take with you and keep in your, keep in your system. Now, we're talking about the same truck, a B-pillar hit. How often have you done a B-pillar reinforcement at the top of it goes up and underneath the roof skin? Many, many vehicles have that design, and some of it is very necessary for rollover protection, etc. On the F-150 and the Super Duty, that stops directly at the A-pillar tube. You look at that design, that allows a technician to simply cut a window in the exterior skin, remove those fasteners and all the fasteners on the perimeter of the B-pillar reinforcement, and they can replace that without disturbing the windshield, the roof, the rear window, all the trim, headlining, etc. You don't have to touch any of that stuff. So that saves you a tremendous amount of time. Now, another scenario for you. Upper corner of the windshield, a large tree limb comes down in the storm, damages the truck. Quite often, people would say, ah, I've got to replace the cap. Holy mackerel, we're not going to do that. What you can do is you can section that green upper A-pillar tube on the crew cab only. It can be sectioned directly over the B-pillar reinforcement. And so there's just a few options, many, many different ways to repair the truck that you never had available before. Is this stuff good? Common sense? Makes sense, right? So as we move on, the in-service instruction sheet, think of this as the roadmap. This is the way that you repair the vehicle graphically. The rivets are called out. You'll see seven of rivet number such and such, but the rivet code EN, these are self-piercing rivets. The DP11 200H, what that means is the mandrel you use to drive that particular code of rivet in that location. Self-piercing rivets are quite a science. They're not the easiest thing to understand. They go in depending on the thickness of the stack up of the metal, the heat treatments, and the dimensions that the rivets have. If you use the wrong mandrel here, you're not going to have a safe repair on that rivet joint. Now when you look at the hen rubber gun, the pro spot gun, but the guns we have in back over there, the mandrel is actually etched, that number is etched into the mandrel. So as you're looking at the instruction sheet, it tells you where that rivet goes, it tells you what the rivet letter code is, but it also tells you what mandrel you drive that rivet with. Does that make sense? Simple? Once you start doing it, and it sounds a little bit much, but once you start doing it, you start becoming second nature. Kind of like at first, something that's difficult at first, but then really you pick it up and you move on. So the instruction sheets are included with each and every service sheet metal part, but they're also included on iPAR.com, on insurance sites, motorcraftservice.com, OEM One Stop. There's a number of different avenues that you can get these sheets. But here today, grab one of the cool bags because it's in the memory stick that's in our bags today. So, that's the instruction sheets. And the iPAR training course, show of hands, who's done the iPAR course? Has anyone done F406? F406 is actually one of the hottest iCAR courses in history. We've trained a vast number of technicians with it, but interestingly also, over 6,000 insurance adjusters have been through the training as well. So that's an effort that we try to make to get the insurance as well as the repair field up to speed with the truck. There's also a welding certification. Think you're a hot welder? Think you're the best? This is a certification to see how good you are. WCA05 through iPAR. Now, this is the iCAR website. You can see the instruction sheets are enumerated on the tabs. Naturally, Motorcraft Service has a similar thing. Let's talk MIG welding for a minute. Numerous repairs can be done with the MIG welding. You're welding exterior skin, you're welding cab cross members. There's numerous different options that are out there. What we want you to have is a 230 volt system with pulse technology. 55-54 wire at 1.2 millimeters. You're going to run pure argon as a shielding gas. This ain't rocket science. Once you get it all set up, it's very easy to work with. We talked about the hand and power tool dedicated set. We talked about, well, 
I'll mention a little bit and dent extraction systems. A lot of us have these for steel, but your amperage requirements and materials requirements change for aluminum. See, any of the companies, Dentfix, Carliner, Sabora, there's a number of different brands. Chief has one too. And available through the Rotunda catalog that we have in the back. Joanne and Dave can help you out on that. Also, too, the wet mix air filtration systems, systems like Eurovac, Clayton, Chief, Carliner, there's many different ones on the market. We talked about the work area separation. And that basically can be polyethylene curtains set up like your Goss curtain walls. You might use them in your wash bay, detail bays. But you're just trying to quarantine off a section of the shop. No, if you want to have a clean room, if you're going to use a clean room, build it. Ford Motor Company does not have a problem if you decide to do that. We're just not mandating it. The curtain walls are perfectly fine and more than adequate to separate the work areas. And of course, we talked about the self-piercing rivet gun briefly as well. So these are a bunch of the shows we've been at this year and other years. Um, I've done this presentation now, I think, I think it's 176 times. So, wow. But um, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'd like to open the floor up for questions. And if it isn't just about the trucks, we could talk about steel vehicles, anything you like. So the floor is open. Would anyone have a question? Either I'd be good or maybe everybody's hungry, ready to go to lunch or anything. <laughs> I'm sorry? 2017 is what we understand. I believe later, or is it later then? Is it in now? 10 speed is in right now. You gonna get one? You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Any other questions? Well, folks, I want to thank you for your attention and time. You have a great day and enjoy the show, and feel free to ask any of the questions you think of through the day. Have a nice day.